You're planning on taking a road trip with your Tesla, but maybe you're a little bit concerned with range anxiety. There are five road trip charging tips that I'm about to cover in this video that will hopefully ease your mind, and they should virtually eliminate any anxiety you have about an upcoming long range road trip that you might be taking in your Tesla. Now I've taken multiple road trips in our Teslas. Two of them happen to be of the long range variety. The first was from the northern suburbs of Detroit to Clemson, South Carolina. Overall, that was a 1,400 mile trip. If you want some more details on how that road trip worked out for us, I created a video of that and you can view it at the link here at the top of the screen. The second trip was a little more involved. It was a 2,300 mile trip that we split into multiple days and it was from Detroit to Orlando, Florida for spring break. And we took that trip in my wife's long range Model 3. Both of these trips were uneventful, and we actually found the trips to be pretty enjoyable. I followed the tips I'm about to cover in this video, and they virtually eliminated any range anxiety that we had during the trip. Planning your route. The first thing you're going to want to do is some pre-planning. Now, you don't need to turn this into a huge science project, but spending 10 to 15 minutes doing some initial planning is going to help ease any anxiety you have going into the trip. I use Google Maps on my phone or computer to get an idea of the route that we're planning on taking for that trip. Now, the Tesla navigation system is built on Google Maps, so in theory, the route Tesla navigation is going to give you should be the same as what you're seeing with Google Maps. I do this as a means to audit the trip. So when I plug my destination into the Tesla navigation system, I already have an idea on the route that Google Maps is going to tell me. So it's just a way for me to reconcile what Tesla navigation is saying in comparison to Google Maps. The second step is heading out to your Tesla and plugging your final destination into the Tesla navigation system. Now this is going to give you a general idea of the route that it's taking as well as where the location of the superchargers are that it's going to have you stop at. I make note of the number of stops and the cities where these supercharging stations are at, and I reference them in the next step that I'm about to cover. Now keep in mind, these stops can change once you get into your trip. Things like weather, wind, speed, temperature, all factor into the efficiency that you're going to get with your Tesla. And you may find you have to stop sooner than what this pre-planning has told you. And that's okay. The car will adjust based upon these other conditions. And we'll see that here in a minute. Second step is to download an application called a Better Route Planner. You can get this on Android, iOS, or access it via the web. I use a Better Route Planner as a means to audit what the Tesla navigation system is recommending in terms of supercharging stops. There's a number of different settings in the app, and you can configure it to have you stop more often and charge for less time, or stop less and charge for longer. There's also a way to enter any additional weight to reflect luggage and passengers. The more weight in the vehicle, the less efficiency you'll be getting during your trip. Now you can compare the charging stops being recommended by a better route planner and what the Tesla nav system is telling you from the prior step. I use a better route planner solely as a backup for the trip, and it's a way to audit what Tesla navigation is telling me. And if I find that I'm running into concerns with my battery state of charge and how long I have to get to my next supercharging stop, I can fall back to a better route planner and adjust and stop at a closer supercharging station. Helps really eliminate any range anxiety that you may have. So let's get into the trip. Now this might go without saying, but the night before your trip, charge up your vehicle. If you happen to have a long range model, charge it to 100%. If you're traveling when it's colder, set the scheduled departure time on the Tesla application. That way the car will precondition, warm up the battery, so it'll be more efficient at the start of the trip. Enter your final destination into the Tesla application and make note of your first charging stop. Now you'll notice the Tesla navigation system is going to give you an estimate of your state of charge when you arrive at that supercharging stop. I tend to be more conservative, so I like to have my state of charge floating between 15 and 20% when I get to a destination. This gives me some contingency if I run into any problems or I need to navigate to a different supercharging stop for some unknown reason. Now, based upon my experiences, the estimate Tesla navigation system is going to give you is just that. It's an estimate. 
While it's usually pretty accurate, I have seen it slowly decrease during some of my trips. So you need to keep that in the back of your mind. If you find yourself in the situation where that estimated state of a charge at arrival is slowly decreasing and you start to have some concerns, you've got three different options. The first is just let it do its thing. If the estimated state of charge is hovering around 15% and you're 15 to 20 miles away from your destination, I wouldn't worry about it. You're close enough where you're not going to lose that much of your battery before you get to your destination. Your second option is do nothing. Tesla navigation will reroute you if you need to navigate to a closer supercharger. Based upon my experiences, if the estimated state of charge falls below 10% for your next destination, it is going to reroute you to a closer supercharging stop. So let me repeat that for you. Tesla navigation is smart enough to reroute you so you're not stretching your drive too far between charging. Third is you can add another stop on your Tesla navigation to route you to a closer supercharging station. So if the estimated state of charge is falling and you're not comfortable with how much it's fallen and it doesn't appear to be rerouting you, go into Tesla navigation, add another stop, to a closer supercharging station. You're gonna be able to see all the different supercharging stations that are around you. So you can pick one that's a lot closer than the one that Tesla navigation is routing you to. Now be sure to add that new stop in your Tesla navigation system so the car can precondition and warm up that battery before you get to that new charging stop. This way when you stop to charge, charging speeds will be a lot higher than if you were not preconditioning that battery. Now speaking of charging, as I just mentioned in the prior step, if you're using Tesla navigation to navigate you to the next supercharging stop, your car is automatically going to precondition. This preconditioning can start anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes before you arrive at your destination, and you're going to see it cycling on and off during the course of your trip. This is all good. By preconditioning the battery, it's going to warm it up and help with the charging speed when you get to that next supercharging stop. Once you do plug in, you're going to get a faster charging speed the lower your battery happens to be. But those charging speeds are slowly going to decrease as the state of charge rises in the battery. So if you're in a hurry and you want to do quicker charging stops so you can get to that next destination quicker, you need to run your battery down to say under 20% so you can get those quicker charging speeds. You're gonna find that those quicker charging speeds are between about 20 and 40%. And once you get to the 40 or 50% mark, they're slowly going to start to decrease. If you're not in a hurry, plug in the vehicle, go for a walk, hit the restroom, grab some lunch, stretch your legs, whatever you need to do, and let the car charge for you while it's unattended. Now, how long should you charge for to ensure you have enough juice to get you to your next destination? Well, that's pretty easy. Tesla navigation is going to tell you. I mean, it will literally display a message for you when you have enough charge to get you to your next destination. And you can view that estimated state of charge at arrival for your next destination right on the Tesla navigation screen. Now, I prefer to charge a bit higher than what the Tesla navigation system is recommending. I'll typically add another 5 to 10% to my charging, which takes anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes, just to ensure I have enough buffer in case I'm running into any problems. Yeah, it might take a little bit longer, but we're typically not in a hurry, so spending 5 to 10 extra minutes charging to give us some peace of mind isn't a big deal for us. Tesla navigation. While the Tesla navigation system usually works pretty well, it isn't Waze. Now I know using a navigation system is based upon personal preferences and there's a number of options out there for you to use, but I've had luck using Waze in the past, so that's what I use. With that said, I plug our next destination into Waze as a means to audit what Tesla navigation is telling me. It's another thing that I use to give me a little bit more peace of mind during the trip. Now I've had a few strange experiences using Tesla navigation routing me to a destination. As an example, during our trip to Orlando, we were navigating to our next supercharging stop. 
Tesla navigation had us getting off at the exit prior to where the supercharging stop was. So we thought that was kind of weird, but in the back of our minds, we're thinking, all right, maybe there's not a exit ramp at that exit, and it was routing us a back way to that supercharging stop. Well, when we got to that supercharging stop, lo and behold, there really was an exit. So it routed us an extra 10 minutes through the back roads to get to this supercharging stop for no apparent reason. Ever since that day, I've started using ways to audit what Tesla navigation is telling me. Autopilot. Now this one's a no-brainer. Everybody has autopilot on their Tesla. Use it during your trip. If you're doing any extended highway driving, leverage autopilot during your trip. While it has its nuances in heavy traffic, it works really well in low to moderate traffic. I use autopilot for the bulk of our long distance drives. It just takes some of the tediousness out of the drive. And if you're stuck behind the wheel for an extended period of time, it really is helpful. Now I happen to have enhanced autopilot on my rear wheel drive model three. So that allowed me to leverage navigate on autopilot and auto lane change during these trips. I'll be honest, Auto lane change is a huge game changer for me. And it's one of those features in enhanced autopilot that I really find some value in. Not really worth the $6,000, but I do find value in that feature. Leveraging autopilot, auto lane change, and navigating on autopilot for me, it's like flying a plane with autopilot. It really makes the drive a whole lot more enjoyable. Now, if you follow these tips, I can promise you it's going to help ease any range anxiety you have for your trip. Yeah, that first trip is going to be a little nerve wracking, but once you've done it a few times, you're going to find it's really not a big deal. Now, one of the things that you can do to help matters if you've never taken an extended road trip in your Tesla is take a side trip before your actual planned trip. Do a day trip where you have to do a charge just to get a feel for how the navigation system is going to work how the estimated state of charge works for you, how you go about doing supercharging stops, and it's just going to make things all the more easier for you as you get into your trip. This is something that I highly recommend you do if you've never taken an extended road trip in your Tesla. I hope you all found this helpful. And if you have any questions at all, please leave a comment below. I'm pretty good responding to comments on this channel, so if you have a question, I will get back with you. We'll see you in the next video.